Hi friends, this is Dr. Gautam Chakravarti. I am a cardiothoracic surgeon with a passion in teaching. I have been into teaching since 2010 and now aim to share the experience and knowledge with you all. Today we shall be discussing about breast, a very important topic for your both clinics and your neat MCQs. Let's start with the development of the breast. The development of the breast starts at 7th week of the fetal development. So it actually starts as a thickening along the mammary ridge called as the milk line of skulls. This milk line of skulls mainly extends from the axilla to the groin and is a basic site of the development of the multiple breasts if at all there is present. So this is the milk line which extends mainly from the axilla to the groin and the presence of breast is along this milk line of skulls. Now let us see the abnormalities which are associated with the development of the breast. The common abnormalities associated with the development of the breast are amasia. What is amasia? Amasia is the presence of condition where all the structures of the breast right from the breast tissue, the nipple and the areola are all absent. This is called as amasia. And we have one more condition called as amasia that is amastia and this is amasia so you have to differentiate between these two amasia is a condition where only the breast is absent but the nipple and areola is present that is amasia so you have to differentiate between amastia and amasia and we have one more condition called as polymastia where there is presence of multiple breasts there is multiple breasts are commonly seen in axilla and it is mainly associated with syndromes called as Turner syndrome and Flesher syndrome. So these are the conditions where we see the congenital abnormalities of the breast. I repeat it is amastia, amasia and polymastia. Now we have some of the associated abnormalities of the nipple development. So what are the common abnormalities that are involved with the nipple development? The nipple development abnormalities the most commonly seen is nipple inversion. This is the inverted nipple which is mainly because of the sub areolar duct shortening. So the nipple which is normally to be averted is inverted and that is because of the sub areolar duct shortening. Now this is a common condition which can get back to its normal position majority of times without any treatment. So spontaneous correction is seen in nipple inversion. Rarely we do surgery. And apart from this nipple inversion, there are other abnormalities of the nipple like athelia. That is the absence of nipples, complete absence of nipples is athelia or the presence of multiple nipples called as polythelia and remember all the polythelia the multiple nipples are present along the milk line of skulls. So these are the common conditions which are seen associated with the breast and the nipple. There are some other syndromes which are associated with the congenital disorders. So where the breast is absent the most important syndrome is the Poland syndrome. So what is this Poland syndrome? Poland syndrome is amasia that is where the breast tissue is absent. Along with the breast tissue there is absence of sternal portion of the pectoralis major muscle, the absence of coastal cartilage and the ribs. So majority of times the hemithorax is completely deformed. And along with that we have brachysyndactyly where the patients have short and stout fingers. So this Poland syndrome consists of mainly amasia, absence of the sternal portion of the pectoralis major muscle, absence of the coastal cartilages and brachysyndactyly. So these are common seen congenital associated deformities with the breast. Now we will move on to the anatomy per se of the breast. The anatomy of the breast, mainly the breast tissue origin. So where is this breast tissue arising from? 
Uh, what exactly is this breast tissue? The breast tissue is actually a large sweat gland. It is a modified apocrine gland. Now this modified apocrine gland extends mainly from the second rib. So from the craniocaudally, it is the second to sixth rib, craniocaudally. And from the medial to lateral side, it is from the lateral border of the sternum to the anterior axillary line. So this is the extent of the breast. And in this extent of the breast, the nipple position is generally fixed. It is commonly present at the fourth intercostal space. The nipple is present at the fourth intercostal space. And you have to remember that the, all the breast tissue, there are presence of hair follicles. Whereas there is no hair present over the nipple and areola in the female breast. Along with this, we have some amounts of small glands called as Montgomery tubercles. These are the sebaceous tubercles which are present over the nipple and areola. And these are enlarged during the time of pregnancy and lactation. The tubercles are called as Montgomery tubercles and these are the sebaceous tubercles. Along with this, we have an axillary tail of spens in the breast, which is seen passing through the foramen of Langer. So the axillary tail of spens, the upper outer quadrant of the breast, is enlarging or elongating into the axilla, like a spens, axillary tail of spens. And this is passing through the foramen of Langer. So this is regarding the anatomy of the breast and the functional unit of the breast. The main physiological important functional unit of the breast is the lobule. The lobule forms the main important part and from the lobule all the secretions come towards the nipple. So the secretions mainly secreted in the lobule asini, they enter into the terminal duct. From the terminal duct, they enter into the segmental duct and from the segmental duct, they enter into the lactiferous sinus and are extruded through the nipple. So this is the flow of secretion of the breast secretions, either it be milk or any other secretion. So they mainly start in the asini, come through the terminal duct, segmental duct, lactiferous sinus and through the nipple. The fibrous content we see the fibrous content of the breast which is mainly provided by the Cooper's ligament. This Cooper's ligament is attached to the pectoralis muscle and is forming the main skeletal framework for the breast. So this is the framework on which the breast is lying so that the breast does not hang down. So Cooper's ligaments are the thick fibrous strands which attach the breast tissue to the pectoralis major muscle. So these are the commonest components that are seen. Let us see the physiological development. What are the things that help in the physiological development of the breast? The most important structures are the hormones which help in the physiological development of the breast. And of course you know the two important hormones that are estrogen and progesterone. The estrogen mainly helps in the development of the ducts whereas the progesterone mainly helps in the lobular development. So the two hormones estrogen mainly helps in the development of ducts and progesterone mainly helps in the development of lobules. And apart from this we have the important blood supply. The blood supply of the blood is mainly from three important arteries. One is the axillary artery, the second internal mammary artery and the intercostal artery. So the axillary artery supplies mainly through its branches. There are three important branches from the axillary artery which supply to the breast. The superior thoracic artery, the acromiothoracic artery and the lateral thoracic artery. These are the three important arteries which supply the breast which are the branches of the axillary artery, superior thoracic, acromiothoracic and lateral thoracic. Apart from the axillary artery, the internal mammary artery which supplies to the breast 
through its branches the intercostal branches mainly the second third and fourth intercostal branches of the internal mammary artery mainly supply to the breast it is mainly on the medial side of the breast that this supplies go the internal mammary artery and the intercostal artery the lateral branch of the posterior intercostal artery so this branch arises from the posterior surface and winds around the chest and comes and supplies the breast the lateral branch of the posterior intercostal artery that is the intercostal artery so all these branches mainly supply to the anterior half of the breast and the posterior surface of the breast derives its nutrition mainly from the breast floor that is the pectoralis major muscle and is relatively avascular along with this blood supply we have the venous drainage which is mainly through the same named arteries the main venous drainage occurs side by side the internal mammary vein the axillary vein and the intercostal vein these are the three veins which accompany the arteries and then drain the breast now in this the posterior intercostal vein which drains the breast it has got communications with the paravertebral plexus now this paravertebral plexus communicates with batson's plexus and this is the root of spread of the breast carcinoma cells remember the posterior intercostal vein which communicates with the paravertebral plexus connects to the batson plexus and from the batson plexus it spreads and disseminates the breast carcinoma cells the batson's plexus can spread or is attached to the lumbar vertebral veins and also directly ascend up to the dural sinuses so the breast carcinoma cells can go into the lumbar vertebra or into the dural sinuses along the batson's plexus now this batson's plexus helps in the spread of this breast carcinoma cells into the lumbar vertebra which is the most common site of the breast carcinoma spread this batson's plexus again helps in the spread of this breast carcinoma cells into dural sinus and from the dural sinus they get deposited on the leptomeninges so this is the route of spread of the breast carcinoma cells through the posterior intercostal vein this is one of the important significant route which we have to remember because majority of the mcqs are been asked based upon the batson's plexus the lumbar vertebra dural sinuses and the leptomeninges spread now this is regarding the venous drainage now we have the lymphatic drainage the most important drainage is to the axillary group of lymph nodes there are five axillary group of lymph nodes the anterior group the posterior group the lateral group the central group and an apical group so these are the five groups of the axillary lymph nodes which drain around 75% of the lymphatic drainage of the breast and apart from this we have the internal mammary nodes and the supraclavicular nodes so these complete the lymphatics apart from this the breast has got its own lymphatic drainage inside so the inside the breast there are two groups of lymphatics the superficial lymphatics and the deep lymphatics the superficial lymphatics drain mainly the skin over the breast except for the nipple and the areola so entire skin over the breast is drained by superficial lymphatics the nipple and areola is drained by the deep lymphatics along with the breast parenchyma nipple and areola is drained by the deep lymphatics so all these lymphatics they have a communication between the two breasts there is a communication so this communicates the breast of one side to the breast of other side so if at all any carcinoma cell which occurs in one side there is a chance of spreading to other side so we should be careful while seeing the breast because there can be migration of the cells from one breast to the other breast now 
the lymphatic classification that we follow surgically the oncological classification is of prime importance rather than this anatomical classification the oncological classification goes by name burge classification this classification is mainly based upon the pectoralis minor muscle the burge classification is based upon the pectoralis minor muscle now it has got three levels of classification level 1 group of lymph nodes level 2 group of lymph nodes and level 3 group of lymph nodes the level 1 group of lymph nodes are lateral and inferior to the pectoralis minor muscle the level 2 group of lymph nodes are present deep to the pectoralis minor muscle and the level 3 group of lymph nodes are present medial to the pectoralis minor muscle we have three levels of lymph nodes present inferior to the pectoralis minor deep to the pectoralis minor and medial to the pectoralis minor now these levels now each level has got one or two groups of lymph nodes the anatomical group of lymph nodes which you need to remember the level 1 includes the anterior posterior and lateral group of lymph nodes this is level 1 anterior posterior and lateral group of lymph nodes the level 2 group of lymph nodes they include mainly the central lymph nodes and the lymph nodes which are present between pectoralis minor and pectoralis major the level 2 rotors group of lymph nodes which are the lymph nodes which are present between pectoralis minor and pectoralis major and we have central group of lymph nodes these are the two groups of lymph nodes and level 3 we have apical group of lymph nodes also called as the Halstead's group of lymph nodes so try to remember the rotors group of lymph nodes level 2 and Halstead's group of lymph nodes it is level 3. So these are regarding the lymphatic sub drainage of the breast and we have some of the important nerves in relation to the breast tissue which can get easily injured during surgery. So you need to have a profound idea of the nerve relations in the breast. The important nerves are the long thoracic nerve which mainly supplies the serratus anterior muscle so this if at all is damaged can cause winging of the scapula one of the important nerve if it is damaged causes winging of scapula the long thoracic nerve the second nerve which is in relation that is the thoracodorsal nerve this mainly supplies the latissimus dorsi and the other nerve which is present in relation to this is the intercostobrachial nerve which mainly supplies to the medial aspect of the upper arm if at all there is an injury to this intercostobrachial nerve the sensation over the medial aspect of the upper arm the sensation on the medial aspect of the upper arm is completely lost so the intercostobrachial nerve this is also the commonly damaged nerve during surgery so these are the three important nerves remember the long thoracic nerve which supplies the serratus anterior the thoracodorsal nerve that supplies the latissimus dorsi and the intercostobrachial nerve which supplies the medial aspect of the upper arm